Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. 25 years ago today, an early morning crash killed a Rockford teenager. Family members say the shock of losing her still has not gone away. First responders in a not-for-profit come together to spread awareness for organ donation. The focus is a former firefighter saving lives even after he suddenly passed away. And organizations around the world set aside a day to spread awareness of homelessness. In the state line, several counties pool resources to try to eliminate the issue entirely. Good evening, I'm Eric Wilson. Mimi Murphy is off today. It's been 25 years since a 17-year-old Rockford East High School student died in a car accident. Today, there's a special tribute to her, keeping her memory alive. Nikel Delgado talked with the family. Nikel, even after all this time, it's still got to be tough for them. That's right, Eric. It's been more than two decades, but family members tell me the pain of losing Dominique hasn't gotten any easier. An artist painted Dominique's face on a building in remembrance of her shortly after she passed. Victor Rivera tells me he saw the mural every day until that building was demolished. And when he heard that the Rockford Area Art Council was seeking artists to design wraps for electrical boxes around town, he saw that as an opportunity to honor Dominique. He hopes as cars pass the intersection, they are inspired. I hope that people that when they drive by, yes, they could see a, a beautiful young lady, but that also it's she's a young lady who had dreams, you know, that never came true. She had a, a whole life ahead of her. Um, so I hope everyone, when they look at that, they can they can honestly know that they can uh, be reminded that tomorrow is not guaranteed and whatever dreams you have and, and aspirations you have to, to go for them. Dominique's family loves the vinyl rap tribute of her in her cheerleading uniform. You can see that electrical box in honor of Dominique Musso on the corner of Winnebago and Morgan. Eric. Thanks, Nikel. Police arrest a Janesville man after they say they found weapons and pounds of drugs. Officers took Taiwan Edwards into custody at the Quick Trip on East Milwaukee Street in Janesville. It was part of a drug investigation that involved several agencies. Investigators also served three search warrants. Officers say they seized two assault rifles, four handguns, more than three and a half pounds of cocaine, and four and a half pounds of marijuana. Edwards is in the Rock County Jail for a probation hold. He should face new charges soon. A Winnebago County man is found guilty of stalking a mother and daughter. Back in March, an order of protection prohibited Kevin Lundgren from contacting the women. That same month, police were notified he violated the order when the mom spotted him following her daughter home. He disobeyed the order again. The jury found Lundgren guilty of aggravated stalking, violating an order of protection, and violating bail bond. Eyewitness News is committed to supporting survivors of violence and finding solutions. We have a list of resources for anyone who may be struggling. That's over on our website, mystateline.com. Just click on the Stateline Strong tab. Local first responders join a not-for-profit to raise awareness about organ donations. Boone County Fire District 2 and Gift for Hope held a flag-raising ceremony. It was to honor firefighter Colton Gritzmacher and other fallen first responders who became organ donors. The ceremony also celebrated last responders. District 2's fire chief says this event makes sure emergency workers like Colton are never forgotten. Our job is to, to help the community and he took that very seriously and he was able to do that. And then again with his unfortunate accident, um, he was able to still help people even during his passing with being a donor. So it just showed his legacy that we want to never forget him and honoring others that have been part of the gift of hope. The flag will fly permanently at the District 2 Firehouse. Next Tuesday marks World Homelessness Day. It's set aside to recognize the successes and challenges that still need to be solved. Drea Baroni joins us now in the studio. Drea, you spoke with some Rockford area advocates. What do they have to say? Eric, Winnebago and Boone counties are making large strides towards improving the issue of homelessness in the community. I spoke with city coordinators and shelter supervisors that say this progress is just the beginning. We've been lucky enough to reach those milestones, but we don't feel like that's good enough. Since 2015, Rockford has partnered with the national nonprofit Community Solutions. Over the years, the city has been recognized as only one of three communities in the United States to reach a functional zero level for veterans and chronic homelessness. Angie Walker is the city of Rockford's homeless program coordinator. She says national and local collaborations are essential to making further improvements. 
It's really important that that we work um, in conjunction with our partners. Um, there's quite a few really good agencies around Rockford. You name it, if they're an agency and they touch the homeless population, you know, we try to work with them. It helps us better serve the clients. And it just helps us be able to kind of better figure out what's going on with their situation. The city and local shelters are working to reach even more people experiencing homelessness as the need for help is still in high demand. We see an increase in homelessness. We see an increase in mental health through the homelessness. We see a huge increase in families. Most of the families that come in here are single parents, so it's very difficult without services like what we offer or the city or some of the other agencies we partner with. Without some of those services, they would not be able to, to make it. Walker says the city has plans in place to continue decreasing the homeless population. We are working on a winter warming center plan to make sure that people are safe throughout the winter. It's it's too dangerous out there for our folks to be outside, so we definitely have to have a plan for them so that they're safe throughout the winter. Otherwise, just working one-on-one -on -one with those folks that are unsheltered and then just continuing to get as many people housed as we can. For more information on how to get involved with local shelters, go to mystateline.com. Eric. Thanks, Drea. A local event could protect your identity. The Better Business Bureau and Members Alliance Credit Union invite you to shred your unwanted personal documents. This video is from a previous Community Shred Day event. It's free, but you're limited to two boxes per car. The BBB's regional director says not properly destroying these documents could impact you for years. Your social security numbers, your checking account numbers, your, your credit card information. If we don't take steps to uh, safeguard that information, it could fall in the hands of someone who will do uh, criminal activities with it. Uh, they could open uh, accounts in your name. Um, they could uh, even buy a car uh, using that, that information and, and, and frankly ruin your credit for uh, years to come and you may not even know that it's happened. Community Shred Day is Saturday from 9 in the morning until noon at the Members Alliance Credit Union at Alpine and Harrison in Rockford. Republicans are on the search for a new U.S. Speaker of the House. Coming up, several lawmakers have put their names in the mix. The party's also considering a former president. Our temperatures this afternoon made it back into the 70s with the sunshine, but we'll see those numbers fall on the other end of the spectrum. Find out how far below those numbers will drop going into the weekend coming up a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lever, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Republicans scrambled to choose a new Speaker of the House after ousting Kevin McCarthy. The party appears so divided, it's not clear if they can unite behind a single leader. Washington correspondent Alexander Limon takes a look at the progress. The race to replace Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House is on. I disagree with, you know, what, what took place, but those guys are friends of mine. Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan says he's the person who can unite the dueling factions of the Republican Party. If I didn't think I could do that, I wouldn't run. Uh, and I also think I can... I can take our message to the American people. Republican Congressman Steve Scalise and Kevin Hearn say they too are running for speaker. And now former President Donald Trump says he's willing to do whatever is necessary to help with the Speaker of the House selection process short term. But hurdles that could prevent Trump from serving as speaker include that he wants to continue his presidential campaign and that he's facing felony indictments. GOP House rules say members facing felony indictments cannot serve in Republican leadership. But it's unclear if that applies to the speaker. Congressman Bob Good, one of the Republicans who voted to oust McCarthy, says Republicans can unite. And once we elect that person, we will all have a vested interest in his success. But New York Democrat Dan Goldman says he's wary of the price to get the far right members of the party in line with the rest of the GOP. What they are doing is cynical politics designed to actually sabotage our system. And it's unclear exactly what they want. Republicans are scheduled to vote for the next speaker on Wednesday in Washington. Alexandra Limon. Enjoy today's warmer weather while it lasts. Up next, our streak of 80s gives way to the 70s, and Candace will show us temps keep falling right through the weekend. Now, your
your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, things have been rather quiet for most of us here as we've gone throughout this afternoon, although we are starting to see a little more cloud cover begin to kind of work in as we take a live look with our SkyTrack camera up in Beloit. This forming ahead of a cold front that'll work through later on this evening and gradually bring our temperatures down tonight, but you'll really feel that drop going into the afternoon tomorrow. We've got the cloud cover moving in and from time to time we did have a few very light sprinkles and a light shower to show up, but our air mass is pretty dry, so we're not expecting really any significant rainfall and a lot of that is actually beginning to fizzle out before it even moves closer to the region. So small chance for a sprinkle or two, otherwise we've just got a few clouds out there this evening. Cold front sits just to the west of the Mississippi. That'll begin to move eastward here over the next couple of hours. With the sunshine we had out there today, temperatures were able to climb into the 70s at 72 in Freeport, 74 in Rockford, 75 in Janesville, and 74 degrees down in Rochelle. 75 for our weather watcher Terry in Genoa. Notice that dew point temperature sits at 47, so that's a sign of some pretty dry air that we have in place, which is part of the reason why we are going to stay mostly dry here as we go through the night tonight. Down to 47, that's where we'll head for the overnight. We've got a few clouds out there this evening. Skies will turn partly cloudy. Winds will pick up as we go through the afternoon tomorrow, and it will feel different tomorrow. You're going to want more of a jacket tomorrow afternoon as that cloud cover thickens back up. Does turn windy with the west and northwest wind at times gusting to about 30 miles per hour. Kind of brisk out there, and we've got a couple of scattered rain showers that'll stay with us into the afternoon. So let's plan this out on future cast. Notice we've got some clouds out there this evening. Skies will then clear out. It'll be a slow drop in temperatures initially, but we are down in the 40s overnight. Wind chills tomorrow morning could make it feel more like 41 or 42 degrees, so not drastically cooler than what the actual air temperature sits, but it'll feel different than what it's been here these last couple of mornings. Whatever sunshine we do see early on is going to fill back in with cloud cover rather quickly, and as we get closer to noon, we are going to see some of those scattered rain showers develop. Now, there could be a rumble of thunder with that, not expecting any severe weather, but just given the amount of kind of instability that builds in the colder air that we have a lot, that's why we could hear a rumble of thunder or two, and also could have some pockets of some heavier rain showers, which may also have a little grapple kind of mixed in just because of that colder air above. We'll hold on to some of those showers there going into the evening, so planning on heading out for those Friday night football games, you'll want some heavier gear because with the wind, it will feel colder out there, especially once the sun does set. We'll keep some cloud cover around through the evening, clearing out just a little bit tomorrow night. And again, we'll see sunshine to start us off with on Saturday, but clouds will begin to move back in by the afternoon, and that will turn our sky partly sunny to mostly cloudy. When I mentioned the wind, we've got about a 15 to 20 mile per hour breeze here overnight. Winds will pick up gusting to around 30 to 35 for tomorrow afternoon, and those will stay with us through the evening and then expected to pick back up once we get into Saturday. So a couple of windy days, and with that northwesterly wind coming in, that'll make it feel rather cool. Now I mentioned that wind chill factor, wind chills tomorrow morning, anywhere from 40 to 45 degrees, but by Saturday morning, wind chills will make it feel more like the low 30s. Hard to believe we're talking about wind chills when we just had, Eric, their temperatures that were in the mid 80s, not that far away. 59 tomorrow, we're 58 on Saturday, Sunday, overnight lows. We've got several nights where we'll see those numbers in the 30s, but we do warm up gradually into next week. Yeah, there's really not much getting used to it after those 80s. Candace, thanks. Reagan is in next with Sports Chicago Bears and their fans hope the team steps up in D.C. tonight and avoids an 0-5 start. Plus, more turmoil unfolds at Northwestern after the school fired former football coach Pat Fitzgerald. Reagan will have more about a new lawsuit after the break. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. Tonight, Matt Eberflus and the Bears will be under the primetime lights of Thursday Night Football and will try and shine as they take on the 2-2 two two Commanders. Good news for the Bears O-line. Tevin Jenkins has been activated off IR to the 53-man roster, so he'll be back at right guard. But one of the biggest questions for the Bears remains, how do they show up tonight? Ready to win or ready to take an 0-5 start to the season? They haven't seen the winning side of a football game in nearly a year. 14 games to be exact, and naturally the losing is starting to take its effect. I haven't won a game in almost a year now, and um, trust me, I take it home with me, and it hurts, man. It hurts, and uh, 
it's hard to deal with it, but you gotta, we, we all gotta be adults about it and be able to move on and, you know, be able to trust the process set. And, uh, it can be hard to do sometimes when things aren't going your way. And, um, you know, maybe you're not getting the targets you want and you're not winning and all those things kind of add up. And hopefully that all adds up to a win tonight. The Bears kick off here shortly at 7:15. That game can only be streamed live on Amazon Prime Video. Well, the Pat Fitzgerald saga continues because the fired coach is firing back and asking for millions of dollars in return. The former Northwestern football coach who was fired this fall amid a hazing scandal has filed a wrongful termination lawsuit against the university. He is seeking upwards of $130 million for lost earnings, as well as the damage to his reputation and future coaching career. Among other things, the lawsuit claims that Fitzgerald was fired without any legitimate or rational reason whatsoever. And the NBA's reigning MVP has committed to play for Team USA in the 2024 Paris Olympics. Philadelphia 76ers star Joel Embiid holds both French and American citizenship and has been at the center of an intense recruiting battle over which country he will represent at the Olympics. Embiid told media that he ultimately chose the United States because he wants to help the U.S. return to the top of the international basketball world. And as Embiid looks to accomplish that goal, the Golden State Warriors have another in mind. They've been one of the most successful NBA franchises over the last decade, and they want to do the same in the WNBA and continue growing the women's game. The league announced this morning that it has approved the organization as an expansion franchise starting in the 2025 season. The future team will play its games at the Chase Center and practice in Oakland. That's sports. We'll be right back. Shouldn't be surprised about these temperatures. We had fair yeah, warning. Yeah, I mean, you've been you know. warning us for a week that the 80s were just where they will be a distant memory soon, and that change. Although it's been kind of a gradual change, being in the 70s today after several days in the 80s, right. it's kind of nice. I think it'll kind of help bridge the the uh, drop off. I think sure. from yesterday <laughs> to tomorrow, but still, it, you know, when you've got almost summer like warmth there for the last couple of days, it will come as a shock, especially when we could see highs in the 50s for the next several days and some wind-driven rain showers tomorrow. Temperatures then are going to stay in the 50s next week. Thanks, Candace, and thank you for spending time with us. Stay safe.